I served as the deputy incident manager for the Ebola response in Liberia. We had to coordinate the res response. We had to work with our partners. We had to dedicate our all into the Ebola response. It meant nights of not sleeping. And when I say nights of not sleeping, I mean it. We were not getting sleep. But we did all of that, the case management, the contact tracing, you name it, to ensure that Mama Liberia was safe from Ebola. My story is a story of hope. It's a story of perseverance. It's a story of hard work. It's a story of dedication. Now, all of what I've said stems from the fact that people took the risks to support me. I did not do it on my own. People took the risks to invest in me with the hope that they would have really, really been able to reap a good seed. I was educated through scholarships. Somebody talked about scholarships today. People gave me what I wanted. I dedicated my time to study. I studied in Asia. When I told everyone I was going to Bangladesh, everybody said, why not the UK? And why not America? And why not Australia? But I want to mention something as you choose what you want to do in the future. It is not about the place that the school is. It's what you choose to make out of it. I chose to make the best of the public health in Bangladesh that you may consider not very important. <laughs> Bangladesh provided for me an opportunity to learn public health from a realistic perspective. Everything I needed to see in public health, I saw it in Bangladesh. I remember being in class and we were talking about Nipah virus. It's the same thing when we talk about Ebola. So the place doesn't matter. It's what you choose to make all of it. So I'm grateful to the people of Bangladesh. I'm very grateful. They pay 75% of my fees. They gave me a place to stay. I got my books and I made the best use out of what they had to offer. I've been home, I fought Ebola, I'm happy with myself. Do things that make you happy with yourself. 